In this video, we're going to do a hypothesis test for mu, that's the population mean, when the population standard deviation is unknown. Now, this is a bit more realistic than previous examples because in reality, you're not going to know the population standard deviation. Any kind of sample or survey or anything like that will be relying upon the sample data only. So let's get stuck straight into it. Here's a question in which we've provided a data set for you to calculate stuff from scratch. And I'd suggest if you're comfortable pausing the video now, giving the question a go and then seeing if we get the same answers. It goes like this. An online fashion store called Show Donkey advertises that its average delivery time is less than six hours for local deliveries. A random sample of the amount of time taken to deliver packages to an address in Stanmore produced the following delivery times rounded to the nearest hour. So the question is, is there sufficient evidence to support Show Donkey's advertisement at the 5% level of significance? Right, so much like the previous videos in this series, we're gonna follow a very structured approach to this, a five step approach, which I introduce in one of the first videos. The first step is to state the null and alternate hypotheses. Now my rule here is to always focus on the alternate hypothesis as this is where we put the statement that we are seeking evidence for. So here we're asked whether there's sufficient evidence to support Show Donkey's advertisement, in which they say that their average delivery time is less than six hours. So that statement goes in our alternate hypothesis, leaving a mere equality in our null hypothesis. Now the reason being is in a hypothesis test we have two potential results and that's to either reject the null hypothesis or to not reject the null hypothesis. And if we're seeking evidence for something, we would hope that we can reject something in favor of it rather than just simply not rejecting it. So for that reason we put whatever we're seeking evidence for in our alternate hypothesis. The next step is to calculate the test statistic. So here is a list of the 10 observations and each of those are hours. Now it's simple enough to calculate an average and I've just done that using Excel and that cell range B6 to K6 as it was for me. And I've also calculated the standard deviation using Excel, but it's possible to do this by hand. And in doing so, you'd be using this formula over here on the right. As this is a sample, to calculate our sample's variance, on the bottom we're going to have to divide by n minus one. Now I've made a video to explain this exact phenomenon. And if you've always been irked as to why the sample's variance gets divided by n minus one, as opposed to just n, then I'd suggest you check that out and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. But of course, to get our standard deviation, you would take the square root of all that. So here's our sample mean at 5.6 and our sample standard deviation at 2.27. Now, if you were to draw a distribution of the possible values of our sample mean, given the population mean is six, in other words, assuming the null hypothesis is true, this would be the distribution. So basically this hypothesis test is really gonna be asking how extreme is this value of 5.6 if the null hypothesis was true? Is it too extreme for us to realistically hold on to that null hypothesis? Now we're gonna actually have to calculate a test statistic here and using these pieces of information, X bar S, and we know there's also 10 observations, we can calculate a T statistic based on this formula here. Now the reason why it's a T statistic and not Z is because we do not know what the population standard deviation is. And when that's the case, we have to use a T distribution. And here we get a T statistic of minus 0.557. Now the one extra thing we have to note about a T distribution is that it relies on the assumption that the underlying distribution is normal. Now we didn't necessarily get told that in the question, but we're gonna to have to assume it to use this T distribution. And realistically, there's no other way to answer this kind of question. So the circumstances in which our test statistic will be T distributed is when we know that the underlying distribution is normal, but we just don't know its standard deviation. So the next thing we do is consider our decision rule. 
Now we know the T distribution is also a bell curve type shape, but it's defined by its number of degrees of freedom, which in this case is gonna be nine because there were 10 observations and the degrees of freedom is always N minus one. So this is the particular T distribution with nine degrees of freedom. And if we're after a 5% level of significance, we're only gonna be rejecting this null hypothesis if our calculated value of T lies in this region here on the negative side and in particular in the bottom 5% of this distribution. So it might behoove us then to find a critical value of T below which we'll reject the null hypothesis. And indeed we can do that by using the Excel function t.inv, I-N-V. And with that function, you're required to give it a cumulative distribution or CDF, which basically asks us to provide the area to the left of that particular value of t that you're after. So the area to the left that we're interested in is 0.05. And of course, we also need to tell it how many degrees of freedom we want. So if you put this formula into Excel, you'll get minus 1.8. Three, three. Now, if you're watching this from university, occasionally they'll ask you to use t-tables to get this information. And again, you can check links in the description of this video where I go through how to use common distribution tables. But here, we've got Excel at our fingertips. We're gonna let it do the work for us. Our decision rule then is to reject the null hypothesis if our value of t is less than negative 1.833. Now, step 3a, is something that I just put in here so we understand how to use p-values. You don't necessarily need to do this to complete your hypothesis test, but the p-value is the probability of getting a sample as extreme or more extreme than ours, given the null hypothesis is true. So in other words, it's effectively the area in the tail beyond our test statistic. And as this is just a one-tailed test, as in we're only looking at one direction from our expected value, the negative direction. The p-value is fairly straightforward. All we need to do is then go equals t.dist and the t.dist function in Excel will provide for you the CDF or the cumulative distribution given a value of t. So it's the inverse of what the t.inv function provided for us. Now, of course, we have to tell it how many degrees of freedom we want. So we're gonna put our t statistic those degrees of freedom. And also we write true here to tell it that indeed we want the CDF, the cumulative value up until that point, which would be all of this pink region down here. If you put false in there, it gives you some kind of measure of the height of the distribution called the PMF, the probability mass function. But we don't really need to use that for this example. So our p-value is 0.296. So then we state our rejection decision, which is, this is step four. And using either method, we could say that we did not reject the null hypothesis at the 5% level as T is greater than negative 1.833. So it's not in the rejection region. Or alternatively, we can talk about the p-value and say that again, we don't reject it as the p-value is greater than 0.05. In fact, it was 0.296, which is significantly greater than 0.05. And just remember that either one you use, they'll always be in agreement with each other. So if you find that one of them tells you to reject and the other one says do not reject, then you've done something wrong. So it's a good check to see if you've got the answer right. So our conclusion then is that while the sample mean was 5.6 hours, there is not enough evidence at the 5% level of significance to infer that the population average time for delivery is less than six hours. So it's quite interesting, isn't it? The sample mean was actually less than six hours, but it wasn't far enough away from six for us to reject that as a null hypothesis. In other words, we have insufficient evidence for it. But that's it. Thanks for watching.